Good day class. Uh, today we are going to discuss about corporate social responsibility. Our learning outcomes at the end of this tutorial video, st students will be able to analyze the two definition of corporate social responsibility. Why corporate social responsibility is considered an expense by other companies. At the end of the lesson, you will understand the different corporate sustainability. You will understand uh, theories and concepts coming from uh, different experts. And uh, at the end of the lesson, uh, you will know the uh, different concepts and principles underlying corporate social responsibility. To start with, let us define what is corporate social responsibility. According to, uh, according to James Chen, September 2020, uh, Investopedia, the title is Corp Corporate Social Responsibility. Corporate social responsibility is self-regulating business model that helps a company be socially accountable to itself, its stakeholders, and the public. So there are many uh, people involved, organizations involved in uh, CSR. And it is clearly mentioned that this is a self-regulating business model. Why is it called? A self-regulating business model you know you know students if you want to implement a CSR program it is not mandated by the government it is not mandated by law this is a, a free will choice of the company whether the company is going to execute a sustainability development program or a corporate social responsibility program so uh, and, and once it is uh, decided that the company is going to implement a CSR, they have to really monitor, evaluate the, imp the impact of uh, CSR to them. So that's why it's self-regulating business model. And there is another definition that CSR is the management of the moral obligations and duties of the firm on its stakeholders. Uh, the key word here is moral obligations. And again, uh, let us try to uh, give some examples of what are moral obligations of the company to its employees. Uh, one of its uh, stakeholders. Okay, of course, uh, the moral obligation is to pay them wages or salary because they are rendering work in exchange of their wages. Another moral obligation is occupational safety and health inside the workplace, security of the employees when they are inside the companies. So basically, uh, this is the moral obligations of the company to its employees. And there is also a responsibility or duty of the company to the government, like for example, the corporate taxes, uh, their share to SSS, their share to pill health, their share to pagibig. So these are some of the contributions that um, is obliged by corporate companies to give uh, to uh, different government institutions. Uh, and uh, corporate uh, social responsibility is not mandated by law. Uh, there is no such thing the Department of Labor and Employment is obligating companies to uh, <coughs> perform corporate social responsibility. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, take the one of the example which is taken from Investopedia and the author is James Chen. 
Uh, this was updated September 17, 2020. There is a very good example of a company that is performing CSR. Okay? And uh, as you all know, uh, you are aware of this company. And the name of the company is Starbucks. According to the literature, Starbucks has long been known for its keen sense of CSR and commitment to sustainability and community welfare. According to Starbucks, it achieved many of its milestones since it opened its doors. According to its 2019 Global Social Impact Report, these milestones including, include reaching 99% of ethically sourced coffee, creating a global network of farmers, pioneering green building throughout its stores, contributing millions of hours of community service, and creating a groundbreaking college program for its partner employees. Starbucks goals for this year, 2020 and beyond, include hiring 10,000 refugees, reducing the environmental impact of its cups, and engaging its employees in environmental leadership. Today, there are many socially responsible companies whose brands are known for their CSR programs, such as, you know, Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, and Everlane, a clothing retailer. So these are just typical examples of um, companies that are doing CSR. And in order for you to as perform or execute or implement a sustainable CSR, it has to uh, it has to you know, engage three attributes. Like, for example, it should have a social sustainability impact. It should have an environmental sustainability impact. It should have an economic sustainability impact. So, if one of these is not present, you cannot say that your CSR is sustainable because all of these three attributes has to be completed. Let's take, for example, social sustainability impact. Okay. And you can see the environmental sustainability impact. And you can see the economic impact. So what is endearing here is the uh, what is endearing here are the intersections like bearable and equitable when it comes to the tree, no? And it is viable and sustainable. So these are the uh, attributes if you combine the three sustainability programs, you are really developing a holistic corporate social responsibility program. And, uh, and we uh, proceed on this slide, we have an expert uh, by the name of Milton Friedman. And according to the author, Jim Chapelo, August 29, 2019, from Investopedia, Milton Friedman was an American economist and statistician, uh, better, uh, best known for his strong belief in free market capitalism. And then, during his time as a professor at the University of Chicago, 
Friedman developed numerous free market theories that oppose the views of traditional Keynesian economists. In his book, A Monetary History of the United States, 1867-1960, he illustrated the role of monetary policy in creating and arguably worsening the Great Depression. So, uh, he is, uh, his theory on uh, free capitalism, no? free market capitalism, was very popular during his time. And according to Milton Friedman, there is one and only one social responsibility of business is that to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase profits so long as it, as it stays within the rules of the game. Which is to say, it engages in open and free competition without deception and fraud. So, let us try to digest this one. My question is this. Are there businesses and enterprises that operates without deception or fraud? Might be yes, might be no, might be handful, might be majority. But uh, let's take a classical example. There are some corporations that really hire talented, certified public accountants that tries to manipulate their book of financial records simply because they want to uh, evade a full payment of their corporate taxes. So that's why they hire these professional people to really pencil push and manipulate some figures so that they can uh, pay, uh, you know, a, an affordable amount that is pegged to a lower price. So meaning to say, uh, there are some uh, establishments that they have different accounting book of records, no? So, we are trying to tell about deception and fraud. Let us take, for example, the, the case of the late Gina Lopez, who was before the secretary of DNR, and uh, he, she was politicized simply because she was very courageous, very outspoken, on her advocacy about open pit mining and uh, she was very tough enough that uh, she tried to finger point different uh, mining companies about the wastewater they are creating or producing because of their operations. Now, the question is, are these mining corporations not aware of what they're doing, that uh, they are creating toxic chemicals, emitting toxic chemicals, and discharging it in the environment? Is that deception or fraud? Well, maybe, according to uh, Milton Friedman, there is the objective of the corporation is to earn a fair profit but, you know, uh, in open uh, free competition, uh, but of course, you have to take care of uh, your resources and how you, you know, input and output are managed, no? Because what comes in must come as, what must comes out. So, in this scenario, uh, Milton Friedman was really a, a, an expert in free competition. And this is the case really of businesses, that uh, the objective of the business is to earn profit. However, there are some businesses that uh, because of their greediness in you know, profit, they forget to 
somehow forget what they are doing to the environment. Let us take for example, nowadays, no? Because of illegal logging, no? In different countryside. A simple heavy rain, whether it's orange or yellow, creates an inundated continuous flooding. Why? Because there's no more trees and roots to catch the and hold the water no, on the ground. So that's why, because of this illegal logging, what we do to the environment, it returns to us and devastate our properties and lives. So, it is very clear that corporate social responsibility is really not mandated by the government. It is really a free will and choice of the company. And thank you for those companies who are really doing uh, corporate uh, social responsibility wherein they touch the three uh, perspective of sustainability impact, which is the economic, the social, and the environment. You see, guys, uh, what is important here is this. Uh, these stakeholders no, that uh, we are referring to could be employees when you are inside the company. Okay. And if you are outside the company, the stakeholders are the suppliers, the government, the advertising agency, the community, the hospitals, the churches, everything. No? So these are the stakeholders. Remember this. If an employee is inside, if a certain individual is inside the company, it is called the employee. But once the employee goes out of the company, he or she is considered already part of the community where the employee is residing. So that is why, um, let's take for example, a very good example of this uh, corporate sustainability we are referring to as environment, social, and economic. Let us take a classical example in Las Piñas City. In Las Piñas. The Villar Foundation, who is being operated by, uh, you know, Cincha Villar, okay, they have a foundation, no? Villar Foundation. Villar Foundation, okay, is doing a green marketing product. They are uh, doing handbags. They are producing slippers, okay, wallet, and many more items. And the raw materials they are using is water lilies. Water lilies, no? And they, this is the indigenous raw material they are using, water lilies. Okay? And because the input of resources are indigenous, okay, they process this, okay, to produce an output, which is this one. The workers, okay, so this one caters for the environment, okay, the environmental impact because of the indigenous materials. And the workers who are employed are, you know, citizens of Las Piñas. They are given extra income or income or salaries as workers in this foundation. So that is economic and as well as the social. 
So, this is a typical example of a sustainable type of business because it caters the environment, the economic, and the social. Alright. Now, according to this slide, CSR has a reaction to external pressure uh, you know, that uh, improves the firm's reputation and are treated as a necessary expense. So, there are some because, like for example, a certain company is pushed by external pressure and this pressure is the social pressure okay, that pushes the company, you know, to try to look at the effect of what they're doing to the environment. That's one. However, there is a contradiction. The company tries to look at, no? tries to reflect CSR as an expense, as an additional expense. Maybe if you are an entrepreneur, you will ask yourself, why will I invest a lump sum of money for my social responsibility program? Why will I give money to a certain uh, advocacy? Why will I provide a feeding program to a certain community? Well, that is your choice. Of course, this is a social responsibility, a management of your social responsibility to the community, to the environment. And somehow, the question is this. What is, what is the relationship of CSR to this course, public relation? That's a very nice question because, you know, when a company is doing CSR, it provides a positive reputation, corporate reputation to the public. As we all know, we define public relation as the management of our corporate reputation to the public. If we have a CSR, will not will that produce a negative corporate reputation? I don't think so. Because you are helping the community, you are providing jobs. Let's take for example Lamoyan Corporation, the manufacturer of happy toothpaste. Do you know the CSR of Lamoyan Corporation? Lamoyan Corporation, they are employing PWDs, person with disability, to work in their factory. So that's a classical example, no, of uh, of Starbucks, which is doing also and employing some, uh, you know, some uh, veterans or some people with PWDs. So, th these are very good examples of, you know, you are trying to create a social impact to the community. Will that kind of gesture give you a negative rep reputation? I don't think so. So, that is the relationship of corporate social res responsibility to public relation. Let's move to the next. Okay. This social pressure, all right, According to a, a research, no? uh, the research is uh, this social pressure uh, is, uh, you know, is one of the, I think, one of the forces that encourages a company to 
implement corporate social responsibility program. Let's say, let's try to get another example. Okay. Um, example, here in Montilupa City, uh, there is a a city ordinance that the use of plastic is totally prohibited to all establishments. So therefore, because it was it was a city ordinance, therefore, if you are a entrepreneur, you have to abide with this city ordinance because you know it has a, a legal impact if you will disobey the city ordinance. So therefore, uh, there is a social pressure that, uh, you know, a company says to abide. Uh, they will not use any form of, you know, plastic. Like for example, they will use paper bags, no? Or they will use uh, eco bags for that particular matter. So sometimes, uh, because of the city ordinance, the root cause is flooding because uh, plastic materials are not biodegradable. Okay, so this is a perfect example, and uh, one of the one of the uh, according to David Baron, uh, no, uh, according to his uh, you know research about. A positive theory of moral management, social pressure, and corporate social performance. Social pressure as a manifestation of the preferences of society for both financial returns and responsible conduct of firms. No? And uh, it bears credibility because of the threat of harm that can induce bargaining between an activist and its target. So, therefore, uh, according to David Baron, uh, it is because of the social pressure that uh, you know some of the enterprises and companies are forced to do corporate social responsibility because of social pressure. Let us try to discuss about concepts or types of corporate responsibility and in my previous discussion I showed an example about uh, corporate uh, social responsibility. Let us try to develop an example here about the combination of economic, social, and environmental. Let's go to Starbucks. Starbucks has uh, you know, leveled up and they call it corporate shared value. What is this CSV? Starbucks extended technology and learning to farmers in certain geographical region. They shared technology, they exchanged knowledge, teaching the farmers to about uh, the best practices in coffee plantation. So there is a shared value coming from Starbucks going to the farmers. And because of these best practices, farmers are taught how to use these technologies, best practices in planting season, uh, best practices in you know, uh, putting uh, and creating a fertile soil. And out of the, the, the produce or the product, that uh, came from the farmers, Starbucks is buying it you know, for the farmers. Therefore, Starbucks or these farmers earn extra income okay, for their economic well-being. And this environmental uh, about coffee uh, without the use of any chemical fertilizers, organic, you know, and this is impacts the social no well-being of the farmers. So this is a very good example of how uh, this type of corporate sustainability are intertwined with each other. Okay. And according to the framework of uh, 
the framework of or the paradigm of uh, Carol about CSR. And and this um, and this uh, paradigm is to be legitimate, okay? To be legitimate has to address the ins the entire uh, spectrum of of this. Uh, of this, uh, you know, framework, and these are philanthropic, ethic, legal, and economic. So this is the CSR framework according to um, Carol's uh, pyramid, no? So according to this, it has to, you know, it has to, it has to cater, no? So this Carol's pyramid of social responsibility, okay, is about uh, understanding the different elements of this different attributes. Let's take uh, a very a good example. Let's take about economic and legal. So, what is the CSR framework for economic components? Of course, uh, the company has to take care of its and maximize, especially the president and the CEO, uh, is responsible for maximizing shareholders' wealth, no? Uh, because the shareholders are the owners of the company. So, in terms of the economic component of Carol's CSR, uh, CEOs has to take care of the growth of the company, take care of uh, the profitability of the company, understand better uh, the customers and outperform the competition. It is also important no, uh, that they are really committed to profitability. So in other words, the economic components pertains to profitability, it pertains to growth of the company, it pertains to competitive advantage that the company should no, undergo so that it will be economically viable. And on the other hand, the legal component states that uh, company should be compliant. Like for example, uh, company says to have safety health occupational safety and health programs inside the workplace that is according to uh, the Department of Labor and Employment Bureau of Working Conditions. Companies has to abide with the Bureau of Internal Revenue to remit their corporate uh, tax and also remit their shares when it comes to SSS contribution, field health, uh, and uh, pag-ibig. So, companies has to be legally compliant. Especially if you are a construction industry, you should you, you should ensure that your construction workers has abide to the department order number 13, which is construction, occupational safety and health programs. Uh, it is because of these linkages that uh, the intervention of the government okay, between uh, these companies and companies has to ensure that they are compliant when it comes to government regulations and policies. Okay? When it comes to ethical uh, components and philanthropic components, uh, here 
uh, it is mentioned that in every profession, let's take for example, if you are a medical doctor, we have a professional ethics. If you are a lawyer, there is also professional ethics that you have to, uh, you know, uh, swear and take oath, no? So, in every professional careers, there is a professional ethics that you have to abide. Same is true with, uh, with companies. There is uh, ethics. However, um, you know, um, it is sad to say that there are companies who are not doing some ethical. Like, for example, uh, in uh, NCR, no, when it comes to legal ethics, you have to pay your employees and workers that is NCR uh, based no if you are in region 4 A or 4 B you have to pay your employees according to the mandated daily wage that is based on that region okay uh, if companies are obligated right now uh, it is yearly tide season this 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 coming December uh, there is 13 month pay no and because of the pandemic there is a deliberation and argument whether companies uh, can afford to give a 13 month pay to employees this coming december so but these are uh, legal components that what uh, carol's pyramid is telling us no because of uh, you know uh, companies has to operate without deception and fraud okay uh, and uh, you know philanthropic responsibility says that there are you know uh, so like for example uh, Flor Daniel they, they they are continuously a philanthropic uh, company that uh, provides uh, you know provides charitable uh, you know services humanitarian services to the needy uh, one classical example is ABS-CBN no uh, ABS-CBN even though their franchise was not reviewed but still their philanthropic responsibility to the people to the children are still ongoing like for example if there is a catastrophe is if there is a you know uh, like for example in January 2020 when Tal Volcano erupted you know uh, ABS-CBN was the first one who reacted and provided uh, food for the needy people no? so these are examples of philanthropic responsibilities now uh, based on this there is also a problem with C CSR because of you know addressing the societal needs and at the expense of the business sometimes the problem with CSR the employers or the companies are treating uh, CSR as an additional expense that will reduce no, their profit that this is the this is the uh, the problem with CSR and some companies no uh, they do not uh, they do not bear or they are not particular that they are already creating pollution like for example example is this SM Corporation uh, SM Corporation in North Avenue is now operating no, a very large uh, sustainable energy and they are using solar panels Using solar panels, SM North Avenue is now reducing their carbon footprint emission to the atmosphere. The CO2. Why? Because, uh, because of uh, these solar panels, they reduce their kilowatt hour consumption. And because of this kilowatt hour consumption the um, bunker fuel no that is being used by uh, generating a plant 
uh, is now reduced because uh, SM is one contributor company that reduces its carbon footprint because it greatly reduces its kilowatt hour consumption. Okay? And there are also other uh, companies that uh, is using renewable energies. Renewable energies, for example, are windmills in uh, Ilocos Norte. No? The windmills, they are producing uh, so energy to supply uh, a lot of barrios and towns and barangays. No? These are renewable energies. Like for example, in our household, instead of using traditional uh, lightings, we use LEDs, no? light emitting diodes. Uh, right now, there are also uh, energy saving uh, equipment like uh, air conditioning uh, units that are inverter types, refrigerators that are inverter types, washing machines, washing machines that are inverter types. So, uh, right now, uh, a lot of uh, companies, whether in what category, whether in uh, automobiles, uh, in uh, you know household equipments, or so many, they are now trying to reduce their carbon footprint. They are trying to develop new products that are green, that is beneficial to the environment, to the social and economic impact or sectors. So, again, uh, if you are new to this channel or new to this video, please, I urge you to subscribe uh, the video, like the video, and uh, thank you very much for sharing this, uh, this video to others, and I'll see you later. Thank you.